everybody, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my January favorites. We're well into February already, but January was a busy month, so I'm a little bit late. But I have to say, one of the funnest things about favorites videos is the make a pile of stuff I put next to me on the bed to show you guys. So I like show and tell. Do you like show and tell or favorites videos? Click like. How cheesy am I? <laughs> that being said, I really, really, really want to hop right into it because I actually legitimately do love favorites videos. So yeah, I'm going to be sharing with you some books, some food, memories, YouTube stuff, decks, all that good stuff. So stick around. Let's get into it. So I'm going to start with books because why not? So probably, so the first book that I actually put on this, uh, I keep track in my bullet journal of all of my favorites throughout the month. The first thing I added was the Druid Craft Tarot book. This is written by Philip and Stephanie Carg Cargom. Um, this is the, this is actually one of the first, I think this is the first edition of the book, so I don't know if it's changed. Yeah, this is a first printing. Um, oh no, this is a first 2004 printing. I don't know if that's first or not. I don't know, man. I think this came out before then. But regardless, I don't know if it's changed since then. That was what I was trying to say. But I have to tell you, <coughs> excuse me, as a tarot guidebook, this is a really, really, really good one. And I got a ton of great stuff in here. So for starters, um, there is some really fantastic numerological information throughout this book. So the pips are organized by number, so all the aces are together, the twos, the threes, and so on, and there is an introduction page to each number talking about that number, and I kind of geeked out on this because I was doing a numerological study late last year, and I just really, really, really enjoyed that format. I also really loved the introduction to this book and some fantastic spreads. Uh, let's see. Where are they, though? I'd like to show you a couple. Okay, so there is a whole thing where you can lay out the major and minor arcana. I think they're in the back. That's why it throws me. Yeah, here we go. So there is a couple really, really, really cool spreads. So one is called the Spirit of the Circle spread, and it's based on this um, sort of graphic here. And I did actually end up adding it to my, here's what the layout kind of looks like. Um, I did end up adding it to my tarot spread journal, like my tarot, permanent tarot journal, because it's really good. It goes into the self, the spirit of your ancestors, spirit of time, spirit of the tribe, spirit of the journey, all when. It's like a really meaty, like deep spread, but it's not a whole ton of cards. So it's seven cards, and I just thought it was really, really powerful. The other one in this book that I ended up saving was... I thought there were two. Spirit of the Circle? Oh no, that's the one we just looked at. I thought there was another one as well. That might oh here it is, yes, the lunar spread. The lunar spread. So there is a spread here based on the lunar phases. And I really loved this one as well. Again, really meaty descriptions for each of the positions. If you have this deck and you don't have haven't really given this book a good read through very worthwhile. The court card descriptions in here, um, the meat of each card description at all, like it's all really, really good, very thoughtfully done, and I just got a lot of really great nuggets of information out of this book. So highly recommend this one, and if you have the Druid Craft Tarot on your wish list right now, there are two versions currently available. One is a deck-sized box with a like little white book, and it's like only a few dollars cheaper, at least in Canada, and then the other version comes with this big full-sized book, go for this one because this book is so, so good. So that was on my wish list, or on my um, favorites. The other book that is on my favorites that is sort of magic tarot related is this gem. And this is the complete book of fortune. So this book is actually, I posted pictures of this on my Instagram. This was such an interesting find. So this book, this particular edition was published in 1995, but this book was first published in Great Britain in 1936. So there's no actual author credited here, just the publisher, which I believe is Leopard something or other. This is such a cool, cool book. And what happened was a coworker brought a copy in to show me a few pages that were horoscope related in here. And I kind of flipped through it and was like, oh my god, I wonder if I can still find this. Because it is the neatest eclectic mix of 
anything related to divination, mostly divination. Um, divination, there's some astrology, there's information on crystals. But when I say divination, hold on, let me just grab the uh, contents here. There is dice, playing cards, dominoes, tea leaves, crystal gazing, dream interpretation, um, Napoleon's Book of Fate, numerology, um, physiognomy, <laughs> I can't say that, and phrenology, both of which have to do with like the physical body and how it looks and like the shape of your head and that kind of stuff. There's palm reading in here, there's omens, um, popular superstitions, talismans, amulets, name meanings, uh, crystal stuff and a little bit of astrology. It's so much fun to flip through. Like it was, I think I found a used copy for like $3 on the Amazon marketplace, but there is all kinds of stuff in here. Like there's palm stuff in here. And I mean, when you take it in context for the time that it was written, yeah, there's even like handwriting analysis and like, it's such a fun, it's such a fun book. So I'm really enjoying just kind of playing, flipping through it for fun. It, I totally broke my depth year for this book. It was like three dollars, though. And depth year update coming later, because it, it, what, who am I kidding? Anyway, so this was a really, really, really fun find, and it's got that like old book, like smell and look, and it's hardbound, and I just, it was such a fun thing to add to my collection. So very excited about that. Fiction. I finished Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll, the originals. Uh, I had downloaded them on my Kindle. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, the original, I don't think I'd ever read. And somebody was on drugs when they wrote that book. <laughs> like, it's awesome. Um, but it also twists and turns and my brain sometimes, which my brain tends to go very linear, struggled actually a little bit. And I'm thinking to myself, was this easier to understand as a child? Or is it just meant to be utter nonsense from beginning to end? And I have a feeling it's the latter, but I'm not sure. That said, Through the Looking Glass was a bit easier for me and a little more enjoyable for me to read, but I did like them both. It's just, I feel like I remember them being simpler somehow or more straightforward, which is crazy because it's Alice. But Alice, I know there are some Alice hardcore like fans out there is it helpful to watch the Disney movie and like compare? Is there no comparison? Is one a total travesty? I'm just, I need to know. And also in fiction, I am reading the second book in the Temeraire series. Did I leave my phone where I could reach it so that I could refer? Of course not. That would have been smart. I'm literally like digging under my like lap to look for, I don't know where my phone is. I could ask Google, but then it's going to ring and I'm going to have to go find it. Anyway, so I don't have anything to show you. It's by the same artist, Naomi something, the same artist of the popular fiction book Uprooted, which I have downloaded but have not read yet. The Temeraire series is a series about a dragon and dragons were used in warfare and it's really fascinating and the dragon, the, the sort of main protagonist dragon, has a ton of personality. Um, it's really interesting. I'm really enjoying it. I'm on the second book of the series. And I have been getting back into fiction reading, which is a depth your success. Hooray! So I'm really enjoying that. That's books. I don't think there's any others. No. Food! <laughs> Let's talk about some of my favorites. So probably what tops the list is our eldest man-child took us all out. So me, Peggy, and Steve, our youngest man-child, and John, the eldest, we all went out to dinner at a fancy restaurant downtown. It was John's way of thanking us for taking time, teaching him to drive, and all that kind of stuff. So it was a really sweet gesture, really nice restaurant, and like the ama this like amazing meal from start to finish, with wine pairings and fantastic like wagyu beef. I'm sorry to anybody that is not a meat eater, but it was so delicious. Um, and there was a wonderful dessert and wine, and it was it was really good and really memorable. So that's definitely in my favorites for food this month. And also we discovered um, a really cute Chinese bakery not very far away and had some amazing egg tarts, probably the best I've ever had. And if you've never had a Chinese egg tart, they are delicious. They are amazing. Um, like a little bit sweet, but not a lot sweet. They're just, oh, they're so good. And what was the other thing? Oh yes, and tea. Oh no, and wait, so coffee. Starbucks in Canada, I don't know if it's in the States or overseas, but Starbucks in Canada has a cinnamon shortbread latte. 
that is out of this world. It is so good. It has some kind of sauce. It's like probably full of all kinds of bad things, but I know there's like butter in it and cinnamon and it literally tastes like a shortbread cookie. It's delicious. I can't get enough. It's for a limited time. So I'm going to Starbucks a lot right now, <laughs> but it's so good. And tea, that's what I was going to talk about. So the tea that I have been enjoying the most lately, especially over winter, and this is a long time favorite, so this is not new, is Forever Nuts by David's Tea. This tea, this one's empty. <sighs> it smells, like what does it have in it? Does it say? Apple, almonds, cinnamon, beetroot, and some flavorings. So it's not a tea. I guess technically it's a tisane because it's just a fruit. It's like a fruity herbal type tea. There's not even any herbs. It's just, it's fruit. It's fruit and veg <laughs> and some other stuff. But it's, it makes this like really pretty like red tea. And I like to add like a little teeny bit of French vanilla creamer, which turns it this delightful creamy pink. And then it kind of tastes like apple pie a la mode. Like it's amazing. And I was so excited because this is not cheap. Um, I recently discovered that they have it in tea bags, so I found these at my local store and was super thrilled. And I found, totally by accident, a basically a copycat. So this is the brand Tea Squared, and this tea is called Toasted Almond Brittle, and yet the ingredients are apple, cinnamon, almonds, beet. So apple, almonds, cinnamon, beet. It's the same tea, and it turns the tea just as pink or just as red and it like it oh my god it smells so good so I'm gonna see if I can like I'm gonna put a little in my hand just so you can like see how like it's like it's like that like it's oh. if you like nutty or like fruity tea this is so good it's so comforting but I was actually really excited to find a loose tea um this has this bag had 40 servings in it and it had quite a bit more tea than the little tin um, and I think this bag was about the same price as the David's Tea tea bags, and these you get 15 tea bags, and this is 40 servings loose. So, and I like to make it strong, so I, I, I probably don't get a full 40 servings out of this, but still, I was super excited that it's literally the exact same tea, and I would have never known. I just, like, read the description and thought, oh, that sounds yummy, probably because it sounded like my favorite tea. <laughs> so, that was a fun find. I have to go back to my list of favorites now so that I don't squirrel on you. Okay, what else? Oh, self-care. So, I finally did a new henna for my hair, and it probably doesn't show, like, at all because it's been so, so long that I have to build up the color again. And I accidentally made the mix way too light or thin, so I have to make a new mix. I did vlog the entire process with every intention of putting the video up on my other channel, which is linked in the description box, but there's, like, two videos on there right now. Uh, if I can get my act together, I might re-vlog the next time I do it, which is probably going to be soon. But I love using henna for my hair. I don't use henna for hair. I specifically use body art quality henna, and I make my own mix. It's also an opportunity to do a little magic-y goodness, because it does sit on my head for about four to five hours each time that I do it. And I get to add oils and I can add herbs and I can do all kinds of stuff like that if I want to, so it's kind of a whole process. But it does make me feel fantastic every time I do it because it revitalizes my hair, gives it its shine, it just, it's very pampery. It's kind of like a personal spa day. Okay, good. I had to check on my uh, Bridget candle, make sure it doesn't burn all the way out because I need to save a bit for next year. Anyways, that was my big self-care thing this month, or January, because I know you're watching this in February. We're talking about January. Anyways, magic. Uh, favorite things. So I didn't bring my honey jar over to share, but I will link it in the cards. My, definitely the honey magic jar working was my favorite for January, and I found out about that from Danny Mystic, whose video I will also link either in the description box or in the cards. But that was a really fun working to kick off 2019, and it really inspired me, and it felt really good, and the honey jar is still sitting on my altar, and I'm just really pleased with how that one went. So that was probably my very favorite. My second favorite for January was this um, Purify Elixir kit that I got in my Tamed Wild box. That was the last month that I received Tamed Wild. This is an herbal elixir. It was an infusion that I, I made from the new moon in December through the new moon in January. Actually, I guess the new moon was in January. 
because it was the new moon in February a couple days ago when this was finally finished. Um, it made a lot. Like, you're supposed to fill up this little bottle, and I have this little bottle full, and then all of this. But it's a purifying elixir, so it can be taken um, under the tongue. It's made with, uh, I made mine with dark rum. And ten drops, like, in tea or under the tongue as a, like, elixir, an herbal elixir. Or I am planning to actually use it more for, like, room sprays and thing like, things like that. But some potent herbal goodness in here. And that was kind of a fun thing to make. It was definitely fun for me to nurture an elixir throughout the month. I, um, every night I had to give it a little shake with the herbs in the uh, rum to make sure everything stayed mixed up and that the plant goodness was being extracted. So it was kind of a fun thing to nurture for a full moon cycle. So that was really enjoyable. Let's see, I think that was, was that it for magic? The eclipse! <sighs> that was so cool! So, there's a whole lot of opinions on eclipses, but I have to say that the lunar eclipse on January 20th was a highlight for me, for sure, for the month and probably for the year. Uh, we had perfectly clear skies, we were very, very lucky. I know a lot of people had rain and weather and clouds, um, and that's been the case for us for all of the recent lunar eclipses that I can remember. So the idea that we had such good clear skies, it, it made it really special. I did a whole bunch of cool magic -y working stuff that resonated for me personally. And Stephen and I went to some place where we could get a clear view and we just geeked out on it for the entire thing. So that was really fun and memorable. So yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. And let's see, what else do I have to share with you that's not Dex yet? Because I still got that to come. Oh, let's talk about YouTube next. 31 Days of Tarot. Wow. Okay, so I really enjoyed watching 31 Days of Tarot last year. And I was like, yes, I started my YouTube channel. I'm definitely going to do 31 Days of Tarot. And it was awesome. And I feel like I got to connect with so many other channels. I met new channels, met new channels, met new people who are running channels, obviously, on through YouTube. Connected with some new people and um, got to watch a lot of great content. But it was also kind of exhausting. <laughs> and I feel like I make a lot of content. Like I typically upload like four times a week at a minimum. And I've actually, since I started my channel, I'm usually more than that. I think my average is like five to six. It's bad. Like, but I like making content. I really enjoy it. But I wanted to still make my regular content while I was making 31 Days of Tarot. And that definitely meant for a pretty busy filming schedule. <laughs> so mad respect to every single one of you who participated, even if it was just for a couple of prompts or for the whole thing, because whew, it was fun. But I'm also kind of glad to be getting back to our regularly scheduled programming. Um, another YouTube favorite is, of course, Self Worth Saturday, which I kicked off in January. I am loving doing that series. I will, excuse me, I will link to my latest one. Um, I'm not sure when this video is going up because I'm filming it like on midweek, second week of February, I think, like it's bad. So, um, but I will link to the most recent one at that time in the cards so you can have an idea what I'm talking about. But in essence, I talk about a topic related to self-worth, which is a topic I'm super mega passionate about. And then we have a little chit chat after for those of us who can make the live chat. And it's really been so far a really incredible experience with some big light bulb moments for people some really vulnerable and empowering conversation that has just, uh, it's just, it's my everything. So I'm really, really enjoying that that has started. And I also had something else on YouTube. Oh, you know what? I want to talk about, um, I thought there was one more thing. I've forgotten. That's it for January, I think, for YouTube. Okay, let's talk about randoms. So I created a few new readings for my shop, so that's like a really exciting thing. I'm really starting to create some unique to me types of readings, and that's something that's fairly new. Like I've done my own spreads, but this is a little bit deeper than that. So for example, I have a self-worth profile spread that is not up in my shop yet because I'm in the process of testing it right now with a volunteer. <laughs> so, oh, and that reminds me. Every once in a while when I'm coming up with these new spreads that I want to try for my shop, I give away a free reading to um, a random winner in my Supportive Tarot Facebook group. So if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, make sure you're a member because every once in a while I will post those opportunities to enter to win a free reading because I love to test them first and get feedback before I put them up in my shop. So, random side note. 
but I created a self-worth profile reading this last month, a chakra self-care reading, and also a fairy tale wisdom reading, and all three of those I'm super stoked about because they all involve a combination of different decks and different methods, and it just, they feel really cohesive and empowering, and they're kind of, they're like speak in my speak, you know? So I'm really excited about that. I also kicked off in December, I think it is, no, I kicked it off in January, my um, subscription service. So I'm only opening that up to a maximum of three clients at a time. So each month I only have three spots open and I do have one of those spots taken as of now with an ongoing client. Um, so two more are open, but I did start that in January and it just involves like a month ahead spread, some week ahead spreads, and a couple of other readings that can be like used throughout the month to help support you on your path. That's really fun and it's especially uh, empowering to me to be able to support a client in an ongoing way. That's something that I really enjoy doing and seeing progress and being able to accompany someone on their journey is like a really humbling and beautiful experience. So that is definitely in my favorites. And that is, I think, all I had down for random, isn't it? Do, do, do. Oh, oh, there's one more thing. I have to read my like tiny handwriting in my like little bullet journal slash planner. Peggy came up with the idea to do a... <laughs> Peggy did what? Peggy's like, Peggy did what? Um, I'm filming, babe. Okay, you did the give and re Yeah, go away. Okay. She did... <laughs> She's like, okay. She did the... She came up with the idea to do a divination practice in the Supportive Tarot Facebook group. So we are doing now give a reading, get a reading. It's just a really unique activity where we create a bit of a reading chain. All the readings take place and are shared in the group. It's not something that happens behind the scenes. So it's um, it's just been really, really fun. Sorry, I thought Peggy was up to no good back there. <laughs> She's fine. She's wandered off. Um, but it's been really fun to be able to practice. And the idea is that people who are new to tarot, oracle, runes, whatever, can come in there and practice reading for people on a defined topic for the week. And then if you're... You, if you're really experienced, you can practice with a new deck or a new tool or you can um, try a new spread. So it's a really cool way for all of us to just practice and we encourage feedback and everything takes place, that's what I was saying, everything takes place in a visible way. So it's not like a swap where things happen behind the scenes and maybe some people get their swaps back and some don't and it's just this really cool visible straightforward thing and we can learn not only from the readings that we give and get but also from the readings other people give and get so you can kind of see how different people look at the question how they choose what spreads they choose to use what decks they choose to use and how they end up interpreting the cards so it's been really cool so that's my other random favorite for the month and I literally my eyeballs are going you guys holy moly my favorite purchase of January oh there's a couple um, but I have to tell this one story for those of you who haven't heard it yet, so I should have grabbed it to show you guys. I totally didn't, because it wasn't in my, I haven't used it yet, so I haven't put it in my list of favorite decks or anything yet, but Simon of the Hermit's Cave collaborated with, um, a artist on the Hermit's Cave Tarot. It's a, like, a depiction of the Rider Waite Smith, basically, in a different style. It's got this really pretty stained glass look. Long story short, that was a really fun purchase in January, partly because Peggy and I accidentally both bought one at the same time and had to get one refunded because we were both in the chat, like, finding out about the limited copies of the one with, like, Simon on the back and all this kind of stuff. And I didn't know she was in the chat, and she didn't know I was in the chat, and so we both ended up <laughs> buying one. Uh, and, yeah, I only got one. I didn't end up with two, but it was still a fun experience. So let's go into decks and then I will share memories last. Yes. Okay. So decks for the month are not probably going to be a big surprise except for maybe one. So my first favorite deck for January is the lovely and super duper adorable Anna Mantras deck by Katie Welsh. Oh my gosh. These are the backs. I, I, I was so inspired by these I designed an entire spread using these in my shop and that's the um, chakra self-care, oops, they're upside down, the chakra self-care reading. Um, and I etched this deck in rainbow colors to match the cards because they do have, like, they're orange on the front, so they're orange on the sides. Sorry, it was terrible. Orange on the fronts, orange on the sides. 
green on the fronts, green on the sides. So I matched in matching colors, dark purple and light purple for crown or for third eye and crown. But there is exactly seven cards for each of the seven chakras. And these little guys are so freaking cute. And I have to say, I'm dying right now because Katie posts on her Instagram really regularly. And she posts these little guys. But she's also been making these tiny little micro animals out of Sculpey and literally breaking my heart with each new picture that she posts because they are so damn cute. So cute. And yeah, I'm just, she's just, she seems like such a sweetheart and I'm really excited because I get to meet her and um, Joanna Nelson, the creator of the Mons Tarot and Trish Sullivan who made the book for the Mons Tarot and I think she and um, Trish Sullivan and Katie Welsh also have collaborated on spreads and, and they just seem like really fun girls and I just am really excited to meet them at Northwest Tarot Symposium next month. By next month I mean March because it's February when I'm filming this. But anyways, this was a favorite for sure. These are so fantastic to work with the chakras. Um, they've got little animal wisdom, but they're very, very intelligently picked to give really good chakra related messages. And I just realized this video is like going to be a million hours long. I'm so sorry. I hope you have a beverage and you're not currently dying of thirst. Hydrate. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Definitely hydrate. Um, I also have to say about Anna Mantras before I zip up this little pouch. It does come with this little pouch when you order it, by the way. But the little guidebook is so, so good. Um, I have edged it in its rainbow colors to match the chakras. So that I can easily flip to whatever one. Um, but each one, each chakra, like the cards are organized by chakras, obviously. And then each one has a little summary on that chakra. And then you get a page for each of the critters, each of the cards in the deck. Um, this is also very, very, very well done. So yeah, just a really great deck all the way around. And I do think it's underrated. I don't think there's a lot of people talking about it right now. Um, I almost completely passed this by because I was like, but the colors, the pictures are monochrome. But you guys, the illustrations are so adorable. That everything's really intelligently done and cohesive. It's such a usable deck. It's usable just as a straight up oracle or as a chakra deck. You, you need this. You, you need this. It's so cute and like supportive and lovely. So a favorite. The surprise favorite for January, nobody's going to believe this, well maybe you guys will, is the Mystical Shaman Oracle. <sighs> I have to tell you, I almost got rid of this deck, like I almost rehomed it, because I was like not connecting at all with this deck. And finally I just sat down on an afternoon and I just got to know it, and I found that most of these cards resonated with me. There was like three or four maybe that I didn't immediately connect with. And I was like, well, if these cards are the only issue, then number one, I can learn more about them and decide if I'm going to connect with them or not. Or I can just like not use them. I ended up reading about them. I ended up keeping them in the deck. But, you know, most of these I was able to read with very well. And so I did test this deck out by using it for some client readings. And it read so, so beautifully and did such an amazing job for me that I was like, sold, I'm good. And I think the reason this is a favorite is just because it was such a dark horse for me. I loved the artwork and the feel of this deck when I first got it, but I just, I'm usually somebody who likes to have um, keywords on Oracle decks, not just titles. And this deck does just have titles. But the imagery is really evocative, and when I got out of my own way and stopped worrying so much about what the dang guidebook said or didn't say, about what the cards were supposed to mean, I resonated much, much better with this deck. That said, I don't think the guidebook is bad, necessarily, but I do think that for this deck it's important that I read from a more intuitive place, and sometimes that lines up with what the guidebook says, and sometimes it doesn't, and I'm kind of okay with that. I think I was really getting in my own way a little bit with this one in the beginning because I really wanted to deeply understand the intent behind each of the images and when I just realized that the images are powerful all on their own then suddenly me and the mystical shaman we got along great so that was really a fun turnaround for me and made it a favorite if you know what I mean then sorry I gotta get into this these two guys next so the goddess oracle oops the goddess oracle that's this one and the weaver's oracle which is in this bag um these two are favorites because i developed monthly rituals around them so 
starting in January, at every full moon, I am going to be drawing, and I did for January, a new goddess to work with for a moon cycle. I really find that the, this goddess oracle is really, really wonderful. The goddess art is beautiful, but really the guidebook is where everything shines because there is really good information. There's like a, like a little poem for each goddess. There's some information about her. I love Hestia. Um, and then there is also a ritual or a meditation that you can do to connect with this particular goddess energy. And when I first worked with this deck, I thought it was really powerful and beautiful, but I was reluctant to put it away because I liked it so much uh, that I really wanted to incorporate this into a full moon, um, part of my full moon ritual. So now I draw a new one each full moon and she lives on my altar. Right now I have both my one I drew at the last full moon, uh, which is Quadalicu, and I also have Bridget because we just had Imbolc recently and I'm still enjoying Bridget's energy, so they are both on my altar at the moment, but really, really enjoying this deck for that reason, so I wanted to mention it in my favorites for this, for January. And then I'm doing something very, very similar with the Weaver's Oracle. So this deck is really powerful and really, really beautiful. These weavers are, I think, way too, I don't know if intense is the right word. Maybe intense is the right word, but there's so much depth to each one of their stories and each one of these paintings that I really felt similarly that I wanted to work with their energies in a slower, more methodical way. Also, look at the edging I did to match the backings. I'm so happy with how that turned out. I wanted it to look like the fabric here. Um, so what I do with these is draw one for each new dark moon. So I just drew a new weaver. I read her story. I get to know her a little bit better. And she also sits on my altar for a full moon cycle from dark moon to dark moon. So these are also in my favorites. So yeah, I just, I wanted to mention them this month. I don't know that I'll mention them a lot throughout the year. We shall see, but, um, they're really a part of my monthly habits now. So that's kind of exciting. My very favorite tarot deck of January, I totally got sidelined, sidetracked, but was the Sassy Burrito. You guys, I worked with this the very last week of January. <gasps> I think this might be like my runner-up soul deck, or my other soul deck, or just a soul deck, or something. But like, it's definitely right up there with my mom's tarot. My dogs are freaking out right now. Don't, don't mind me. It's fine. They're gonna, they're having a moment. Anyways, <laughs> I'm gonna show you this despite the barking. They are... This deck is so gorgeous. The cardstock is heavenly to shuffle. It feels so, so good, even though it's glossy. I know people are like, but it's glossy. It feels good. It's a good glossy. I don't know how else to describe it. It doesn't stick to itself. Like, here, I'll show you. I'll show you. You know how glossy decks are, right? Look. Like, it does it. It just, it's like, it's glorious. It shuffles. It shuffles so, so well. Um, the imagery really, really pops. It's gold gilded, and my gilding wore very well after a week of lots of shuffling and using it. Um, I cannot say the same of other gold gilding. There's one card exactly that took a bit of a ding or a chip. It's my king of cups, but I can't find it now, which is a good sign. Maybe it's worn in somewhat. <sighs> this deck is so good. If you don't have this deck, if it's not already on your wish list, I, I don't know why, because it's really good. And I feel like I'm not giving you more information than that, but every single card does a beautiful job of illustrating the message, of illustrating the meaning, and of giving you just a ton to work with. Um, this card has my whole heart, the world, with this body diversity. I love those curves. That just makes me really happy. And you don't see enough of that in tarot. This card has good diversity generally, I feel like, but I'm, of course, coming at that from my perspective. Love the strength card. I absolutely love the Emperor card for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, I really like the Devil. Peggy and I and Steve and John are watching a show called, and John, Peggy, I, and Steve, John's not here, are watching a show called Lucifer on Netflix right now, which is fantastic, and I literally thought of this card as soon as I was introduced to the character. So perfect. Love my Queen of Cups. She's so beautiful. <sighs> I could talk about this deck all day, which is why I was like, I have to... I have to splice this in somehow. So you're going to see a little choppy chop where I put this into my deck favorites, but had to talk about my sassy burrito. So it, it is really called the Sassarai Vito, and it is lovely, and I hope this is in print forever. It's amazing to me it has not been picked up by a mass market publisher yet, um, but I'm so, so happy that I took the plunge. And look at the gold. It just glows. So 
sorry, it's so pretty. And lastly, memories. What did I write down? I know there's one. This is a big one. I talk about this. So for starters, um, just a brief update on Bruno. He is doing fantastic post cataract surgery. For those of you that were following his journey, Bruno's our little Chihuahua mixed dog. I don't think he's in the room with me. He's not. He, starting in July last year, got diagnosed with canine diabetes, and he pretty much lost his all of his vision by end of October, I think. Uh, diabetic cataracts in dogs is very common, something like 90 it's a ridiculously high percentage of dogs, diabetic dogs, do get diabetic cataracts within the first year of diagnosis. And for many dogs, it comes on really fast, which was the case with Bruno. But we were lucky. We had a fantastic internal medicine specialist to help us get his diabetes under control, which we did in record time. Well, not maybe record time, but it felt like it to us. He was pretty much regulated by October-ish. Uh, and... We also have a veterinary eye specialist just down the street. Anyway, so he had cataract surgery, he had to wear a comb for a really long time. There's a lot of drops. It's quite a rigorous post-surgery situation, but he is finally good. He doesn't have any more like swelling or squinty eyes, no more cone, everything's healed up. So now we're just sort of weaning him off the last couple of drops. One, he'll probably have to stay on forever because inflammation is a thing for diabetic dogs, but both lenses were placed. He's got beautiful clear eyes again and great vision, so he can catch his treats in midair again. It's just, it's so exciting. So that kind of came to mostly a close in January, so that is definitely a happy memory. But I have an exciting thing that I did. So some of you may know that I am a yoga teacher. I don't actively teach a whole lot right now, but I have taught for about seven or eight years, and most of my work as a yoga teacher was around teaching larger bodied students, students who maybe were looking for a teacher, a yoga teacher who didn't look like all the other yoga teachers and who might understand their body and their experience a little bit better. Um, I did end up training as a yoga teacher up to a level that also allowed me to train other yoga teachers. So if you are familiar with the jargon, I am certified at the experienced 500 hour level, which means I've taken 500 hours of training with um, other uh, teacher trainers, and I have training in a whole bunch of different methods of yoga. So I've been trained in Hatha yoga, yin yoga, restorative yoga, yoga nidra, <laughs> um, prenatal yoga, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I have also trained other teachers. So I have trained teachers in my style of yoga, which is body positive. I've also trained teachers in yoga nidra, which is like yogic meditation, and some yin as well. So, I was a little bit over the moon when Bernie Clark, who is the author of this book, The Complete Guide to Yin Yoga, he was also the author to this book's predecessor, uh, The Complete, what was it called? Yin Sites was the original. I have a digital copy of that one, I believe. And he was also my yin yoga teacher trainer, and he's just a guy that I really respect. Uh, he reached out to me not that long ago to see if I would be willing to work with him for his second edition of the Complete Guide to Yin Yoga, which he is working on right now. So he brought me in to model some poses for larger bodied yogis, and also kind of worked with me on modifications that have worked for my students in the past. And it just, it was a really special experience. Number one, it was very, very special that um, somebody in the yoga community that I really admire and respect wanted to include more body diversity in what really acts as the textbook for a lot of yin yoga teacher training. That to me, it's like, yes, this is what I want to happen. Like, this is what I'm so passionate about talking about is more body diversity in yoga, more inclusivity and more body representation. And he is really working on that for the second edition of this book. So he brought me in, but he's also brought in um, a pregnant student um, who is, I think, like 29 weeks pregnant or something like that. Um, I'm, he's working with a variety of bodies for the new edition of the book, and I could not be prouder of him. I, I know that sounds strange, but I just, I'm so pleased that he's putting that kind of thought into the second edition. And I think he's setting a really good example for other um, yoga instructors, yoga teacher trainers, and other people who put work about yoga out into the world to include that diversity, and it was really exciting. So there's going to be pictures of me in the new edition of this book, which is really kind of 
really kind of mind-blowing <laughs> so I'm really excited about that and he really accommodated in a way that I didn't expect like he reached out to me it was fairly last minute um, I couldn't make the dates that he had lined up so he made a new date just for me and brought out the photographer rented a different studio it was very humbling and flattering and made me feel really good so that is probably my most exciting memory from the month and I know it's not terror related but y'all this is me and you know he's been a big part of my life so it feels very much like that exclamation point on many years of teaching and experience and trying to in some way make a difference in the yoga community when it comes to inclusivity and body image and stuff so I'm super stoked so if you have hung out with me for this entire video, thank you so much. I love doing favorites videos. I love watching favorites videos and wrap ups and things like that. I'm sorry this month is late, but 31 days of tarot happened and I was tired. <laughs> but hopefully this is enjoyable to watch. If you love this video, if you like my channel, or if you just enjoy things like this and want to support me in some way, please click the little thumbs up button down below. Subscribe if you're new here and click the bell so you don't miss my future videos. Remember you can always book a private reading with me at my Etsy shop. I take a limited number of clients for professional readings because I also have a day job and I really enjoy doing YouTube and stuff. So it's, I don't take a lot. But if you do want to book a reading, definitely check out what I've got currently available in my shop, and I would love to read for you. So until next time, you guys, have a great day, and I'll talk to you later.